today we're going to be talking about Python framework structure or tool framework structure. And as usual, there's an accompanying blog post at learncreategame.com slash techart slash Python framework structure. All this really is, is how code and resources are organized on disk. And I think this is really important because it uh, dictates on how readable your code ends up being and it affects discoverability. So in overview, we're gonna be talking about an approach on organizing your tool framework, uh, how to add it in DCC apps like Maya and Houdini, and also some, uh, some handy import tricks and adding the code in the right spot so our code is readable. Of course, you can organize things in any which way you want. I just want to give you a quick overview of how I tend to approach uh, the organization of a tool framework. These two folders right here are site packages for DCC apps like Houdini and Maya. Uh, a site package is a, you give the path to the program and it picks up these keyworded folders automatically. So it's just an easier way of ingesting certain uh, types of resources. This folder right here is our Python root folder. It's the folder that we will be adding to the sys.path in order for our DCC app to pick up the framework. And then I segregate this with a Python package of the framework name. And then underneath here are different um, uh, packages, Python packages, and they contain uh, individual Python files, which are modules. Let's take a look at how our organizational sort of choices here reads in code and how to add it into a DCC app. Here I opened this folder, the LCG folder that I showed earlier in uh, PyCharm as a project. Uh, one thing I want to mention is that every, almost every framework that I've worked with in the gaming industry has been distributed via Perforce. So we're, I've always kind of assumed that this thing is going to be consumed as, as a whole so that the, the hierarchy within the framework will stay consistent. Basically, we're, we're not sort of giving certain pieces and parts away to different users. So the, higher, the organization within the Python root will remain consistent and sort of the whole framework will. Anyways, uh, so here is the Python root folder. So in... Um, in PyCharm, I can just mark that as sources root. But in a DCC app, you would basically import in the in the end. I'm doing a much uh, sort of in-depth video on how to distribute the the Maya environment uh, in my kind of favorite way. I've tried many different ways, but kind of the one I really like um, in the end. <laughs> it's the one I've stuck to. Uh, and the same thing with uh, Houdini. So uh, we're going to, in the end, import sys, and then we're going to do sys.path.append, and then the string to the to the folder, which is c colon slash code, cg slash python. Once you have that, now we can basically import. So that means that this is now the root. So the first package that we have is LCD. So pretty much anything you will import will start with LCD. So I kind of tend to use absolute imports because otherwise you can get namespace clashes. That's kind of a whole religious argument on its own, whether you should, how you should import Python modules. But that's the, the way we kind of stuck with it because we had frameworks where they grew in size and kind of, to keep things clear, we're doing this. So LCG. So if we just import LCG, we're basically just getting to this code right here. So for the longest time, I never really used the init files, but they're very handy to put code in namespaces where you want. So say we wanted a um, LCG dot, I have inserted the tool root that returns wherever the end user has put this framework. So you can just insert that code in in your init files to access that namespace. So say you made you had a lot of functionality in Maya mesh like edit and and a bunch of other stuff, but you wanted to put code in the mesh. So Maya dot mesh dot, and I have like merge objects there. So Maya dot mesh dot merge objects. So you put that in the init file. So knowing that the init resolves when we import a package, we can use this to our advantage with some kind of trickier situations when we need to import um, the same 
Perforce uh, module, but from different packages. So an example of this is uh, here's a, a lib package that I have, and this is third-party modules. So Perforce is a good example. Sometimes Maya would change Python versions. Um, there was a time when we supported 32-bit and 64-bit versions of Maya. So a compiled um, Python PYD plugin, which Perforce is using, is then going to be dependent on the Python version. So we would have a Perforce package that it has a single client. So we would use this across all versions of Maya. So this client then imports the Perforce, which means that it's going to resolve this init in the Perforce package. So this init, you can insert, insert a bunch of logic. You can uh, evaluate which system, uh, which uh, Python uh, version and Python, which executable is calling. So this would be like Maya or Houdini. And then you can have logic here to build up your PYD path. And we haven't added this syspath yet, so it can dynamically do that. So you can build up the logic, which one you want to point to, and then even import the package or P, the, this perforce, which then also pairs itself to the PYD. So in the client, uh, that all happens at this line. And then we can create the, or we can just pick up the instance, which is perforce. So now we have the instance which relies on the plugin, which can be dynamically changed based on which Maya version or DCC application that you want to um, inject here, the logic in here. Now, currently both this uh, Perforce version is working for the latest version of both Maya and Houdini, so there isn't a whole lot of logic, but that is a really handy trick that can streamline your your situation in your framework and make it simple. So we had to do this for Pill, I remember, would constantly fail when Maya changed uh, Visual Studio versions that they compiled the application with. Uh, so that is the tricky import part. And that concludes this shorter video on uh, the Python framework structure. I'm right now working on a much deeper video on the Maya environment, like distributing the Maya environment. And I'm also going to do one on Houdini. I just felt that I needed to break off and just make this quick little video because these are all things that I kind of wished I knew when I started building uh, Python frameworks. Feel free to uh, join the conversation by dropping a line below. Subscribe to the channel. And uh, if you find this uh, useful, uh, give the video a thumbs up. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.